girl was locked in a cold room at minus 20 degrees by her careless boss. No one can hear her even if she shouts loudly. How should she save herself when she is alone? She tried to break down the door with a trolley. Once, twice, but in the end, she failed. The wind in the room was bitterly cold. The girl's hands and feet soon froze. In desperation, she looks at her watch. The last movie in the theater next door was ending. A large crowd was leaving the theater. A perfect opportunity to call for help. The girl picks up her plate and taps on the door of the cold room. A child in front of the shop heard the sound. He responded with a toy in his hand. The boy told his father there was a banging on the door. But the man didn't pay much attention. The girl missed her chance and had a complete breakdown. Soon she was freezing with purple lips and a nosebleed. She didn't want to freeze to death and tried to save herself. She wrapped strips of cloth around her hands and feet with tape to protect herself from the cold. But there's no way a person can survive in these conditions unless the problem is tackled at the source. The girl gets cardboard and tries to plug up the chiller. As soon as one side is plugged, the other is blown down. The girl picks up the cardboard and tries to glue it back on. Suddenly, something unexpected happens. This girl was trapped in a cold room. It was all because of the owner's carelessness. The girl, Susan, was a waitress at the fried chicken shop just moments before. A shipment had arrived at the shop. Two colleagues were in a hurry to get off work. They asked her to help them move the chicken into the cold room. However, just before the girl went in, the owner noticed that the door was left open. Thinking that the two boys had been careless, he just closed the door. But at that very moment, a carton of broken chicken pieces was scattered all over the floor. When she knelt down to pick them up, the lights in the house suddenly went out. Susan felt bad and knocked on the door. But the owner was only on the phone and didn't hear her. This is the end. The careless owner had locked her in the cold room, trying to call for help. She remembered she had left her phone on the table outside. Her foot was smashed by a shelf and she was having trouble walking. At this point, Susan was left alone and helpless. Susan didn't come home until late. She didn't answer her phone. Her father didn't reply to her text messages, and he became anxious. She called her colleagues. Both her colleagues and her boss said that she had left the chicken shop after work. The father was worried and went back to the mall to look for her. He called his daughter's phone again, but there was no answer. By now the mall was closed and empty. He had no choice but to go to the police station for help. The girl didn't come home from work at this hour. She must have run away with her boyfriend. The police told him to look for his daughter at her boyfriend's house. As it happened, Wade wasn't home either. When the father found Wade, he discovered that his daughter was not with her. It turned out that the father had been against Susan and Wade dating. The two had planned to run away together tonight to work abroad. But it didn't work out that way. Susan didn't show up at the station at the by now she was trapped in a cold room, her life hanging by a thread. Her injured feet were swollen like bread. Fortunately, she had studied nursing before. She had also treated a child with a misaligned joint. Now those skills come in handy. Susan puts her injured foot in the middle of the shelf. She secured it with cardboard on both sides. Then, with a twist, the bone is finally repositioned. And then a little mouse suddenly appears. Susan was so scared that she backed up and dodged. This little mouse was like an angel coming down from the sky to be with her at all times. Slowly. They became friends. Just as she was getting cold and hungry, she found a box of chocolate pie in a corner of the shelf. She opened the box and ate it. At this point in her life, she was still sharing her food with the mouse. After eating the food, Susan continued to try to save herself. To survive, she had to stop the chiller. She removed the iron pipe from the shelf and used it as a crowbar. Then, one by one, she pried off the screws on the safety cover. After a lot of work, she finally got the safety cover off. She mustered up the courage to insert the iron pipe into the fan blade. This was a dangerous operation. It could have cost her life. This didn't seem to work and Susan decided to give up. She then pulled out a lighter to keep warm. But the smoke soon fills the room. She too was choking. This didn't seem to work either. She had no choice but to put out the fire. That's when the igloo on the cover of the magazine gave her a new idea. So she built a makeshift shelter out of cardboard board boxes. With a little mouse in tow, she felt a sense of warmth. With her consciousness blurred, Susan soon fell asleep. But when she woke up, the mouse had somehow escaped and frozen to death. Her own arm was frozen to the iron plate. She had to bear the pain and lifted her arm up sharply. She taped a sanitary napkin to the wound. She then wrapped her arm in cling film. Meanwhile, the father and Wade had asked everyone they knew, but there was no news of Susan. The police pulled the clock records from the owner of the fried chicken shop. They found that Susan had indeed clocked out of the shop after work. The police tried to locate Susan's location by using her mobile phone. At that moment, 
The father kept calling Susan's phone. The phone kept vibrating and fell off the table and broke. It was too bad the phone was switched off to find out where she was. On the other hand, Wade found a problem with the clocking time. According to the clocking order, Susan should have left before the two guys, but her colleagues said she was the last to leave. So Wade went back to her colleagues and asked them why. He found out that Susan had helped them carry three boxes of chicken to the cooler. It was likely that she had been locked up in the cold room. Wade was about to tell a friend near the mall, but at that very moment, his phone ran out of battery, so he rushed to the mall. Susan didn't give up either. She kept throwing the frozen chicken pieces at the chiller. After much effort she finally managed to stop one of the fans from spinning. She then tried to stop the other chiller as well, but eventually she collapsed from exhaustion. As Susan greets the security guard every time she leaves and arrives at work, that big smile was impressive. But today he didn't see Susan leave the mall. The police, while they were pulling surveillance, called the owner of the fried chicken shop to come and check the door. In desperation, Susan saw a screw in the wall. She used a hairpin to unscrew the screws one by one. Then she removed the sandwich panel from the wall and inside were some fire hoses. She tried to scream for help, but she couldn't make any more noise. She had to pick up a dinner plate and hit the hose with her last strength. The father searched every corner of the mall but found no sign of his daughter. Just when he was desperate, he heard a banging sound from the wall. The plate slid down and fell right in front of him. At that moment, Wade arrived at the mall. After waiting for a long time, the cold storage door finally opened. The father rushed in and held his frozen daughter in his arms. He kept calling his daughter's name, but there was no response. He thought his daughter had frozen to death. She woke up again in her father's warm embrace.